Rebecca, The Sound of Applause, Chapter 4, Two for the Show. On Sunday afternoon, Rebecca stood at the kitchen sink trying to clean melted wax from the candlesticks. Why should I have to clean these, she thought grumpily, when I can't even light the candles. She scraped at the wax with her fingernail, wondering how much more money she would need to buy her own candlesticks. With a quarter from Mrs. Berg, she had saved just 52 cents. Even if she bargained with the peddlers, that wouldn't be enough. Candlesticks would cost at least two dollars. She thought again of Anna, and her stomach fluttered. Lighting candles wasn't as important as having enough food to eat. Should she give her savings to Papa for the ship tickets? But Papa had already refused her money and told her not to worry. He would get the tickets soon, wouldn't he? To be or not to be, that is the question, floated a voice from the girl's bedroom. Sadie and Sophie were reading Hamlet aloud to each other. To buy or not to buy, Rebecca thought, that's my question. Vroom, vroom, Benny ran around the parlor, holding a toy airplane aloft. Sha, Papa hushed him, your sisters are studying. He turned the page of his newspaper. Rebecca walked into the parlor. Through the open window, she could see people strolling along the sidewalks in the mild September air. Neighbors sat on their front stoops, talking and laughing. Victor was off playing stickball, and Mama had gone out. Rebecca didn't want to stay inside tiptoeing around. She could hear Sadie and Sophie reading Shakespeare's lines with great feeling, but they didn't have an audience, as she had when she acted out on the folktale with Max. Thinking about performing gave Rebecca an idea. People paid money to see a show. Sometimes children tap danced right on Orchard Street between the peddler's carts and shoppers tossed pennies to them. Rebecca took Mama's summer straw hat from its hook and put it on. Put it on. Its wide floppy brim and big pink flowers would get people's attention. I'm going out, she called to Papa from the kitchen. She hoped he wouldn't look up from his paper. Rebecca hurried to the door, but she wasn't quick enough. Me too, Benny demanded, landing his plane plane on one of Grandma's geraniums. Take him with you, Papa ordered, so the twins can study. <sighs> Rebecca's heart sank. Taking Benny would ruin her plan, but her, but her brother happily grabbed his cap and ran down the steps. From the front stoop, on their row of house on their row house was empty. Rebecca saw the sidewalk below her. Why, the stoop is just like a stage, she thought. I'm gonna put on a show, she said to her brother. So just stay out of the way. I want to be in a show too, Benny said. Rebecca thought for a moment. If she didn't let Benny help out, he would just keep bothering her. Tell you what, you can play the organ grinder's monkey she told him. You go into the crowd and pass your hat around to collect pennies. Benny started screeching like a monkey and hopped from one foot to the other. This is fun, he cried. But where's the crowd? Well, we haven't started the show yet, Rebecca explained. Don't be such a nudge pestering me every minute. Rebecca stood at the edge of the stoop right at the top of the steps. She took a deep breath and began singing her favorite song. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. A few passerbys turned to look, but they didn't stop. Rebecca kept singing. Maybe she just had to be patient. Surely a crowd would form soon. She sang louder, but when she finished, no one had stopped, and there were no Benny, no pennies in Benny's cap. Rebecca tilted the floppy brim on Mama's straw hat at an angle, like Pearl White's hat. She cleared her throat and began singing at the top of her lungs. I went to the animal fair. The birds and beasts were there. The big baboon by the light of the moon was combing his auburn hair. Benny hopped up and down, hooting and scratching his chest the way the organ grinder's monkey scratched its fur. A few people paused to watch as Rebecca belted out the end of the song. The monkey, he got drunk and climbed up the elephant's trunk. The elephant sneezed and fell on his knees. And what become of the monk, the monk, the monk, the monk? As Rebecca repeated the monk over and over, Benny flitted through the thin crowd. Rebecca saw a stout man drop a coin into the hat. Now she was getting somewhere. Maybe a few jokes would bring the people closer. Max had said, if you make them laugh, your audience will love you. Rebecca walked down a few steps and began sprinkling the sidewalk with imaginary powder. Ask me what I'm doing, she whispered to Benny. Okay, Benny whispered back. 
What are you doing? Louder, Rebecca hissed through her teeth, pretending to look around nervously. What are you doing? Benny yelled. I'm sprinkling lion powder, Rebecca announced. Lion powder? asked Benny. What's that for? The crowd drew closer and looked at Rebecca's hand to the steps. Looked from Rebecca's hand to the steps. More people joined the crowd. Rebecca sprinkled with renewed energy. This routine was going well. Why, it keeps the lions away, she replied loudly. Benny started laughing and Rebecca had to prompt him with the next line. But Benny was quick. I remember, he insisted. But there aren't any lions around here, he shouted to the crowd. The audience chuckled. Benny was a little showman. Rebecca delivered the punchline. Well, then you could see how well it works. People began to laugh. Benny jumped into the gathering, holding out his hat, and Rebecca heard the clink of coins. Suddenly, strong fingers pinched her ear. Youch! she cried. She twisted around and saw Bubby, who was furiously pulling her up the steps. You are shaming us in this neighborhood, Bubby scolded. Even Mr. Rossi sees you begging. Rebecca caught a glimpse of the janitor in the basement apartment, scowling at her through the window as Bubby dragged her along. Let go, Rebecca pleaded. What did I do wrong? You get inside and think about it, Bubby said. Why is it okay for Max to earn money in a show, but it's not okay for me? Max, Max, Bubby sputtered. He doesn't earn two nickels to rub together. Such a man you don't want to be like. But Rebecca really did want to be a performer, just like Max. She couldn't see anything wrong with earning money by putting on a show. Rebecca saw her brother pulling out his marbles. His cap was still on the sidewalk. Benny, she hissed under her breath. Bring the cap. Bubby led Rebecca into the girls' bedroom and left, closing the door firmly behind her. Sadie and Sophie looked up from Hamlet. You're not ready for the stage yet, Sadie laughed, but the hat is really you. Rebecca's cheeks felt hot. People liked my show, she said. They even paid for it, she added as Benny burst into the room and dumped the pennies on her bed. She counted six copper coins. It wasn't much, but it was something. She tied the money into her handkerchief. I want some pennies, too, Benny protested. It was my idea, Rebecca argued, and my show. But I did the joke, Benny insisted, and I got the pennies. Rebecca dropped a penny into his hand. No fair, he whined. You got more than me. Oh, all right. Rebecca gave him two more pennies. It was better than having Bubby come in to settle it. Benny dashed off, and Rebecca looked dismayly at what was left. After all the effort, she just had three cents. Sadie closed her book with a dull thud. We're going to the park. How can anyone study in this madhouse? Rebecca flopped onto her bed. The show had seemed like such a good idea, but Bubby certainly didn't approve. Were the neighbors laughing at her, she wondered? It hardly mattered anyway, since she she could never earn much money singing on the stoop. So far, the most she had earned at one time was the quarter she had gotten from Mrs. Berg. Rebecca buried her pennies in her trunk, pushing aside the neatly folded doilies and linens stored inside. Imagine saving all those until I'm grown up, she thought. She counted all the items she had made. Ten pillow covers, seventeen doilies, six long table scarves, twenty-four napkins. She couldn't use all those linens in her whole life. But seeing the piles of needlework gave her another idea. She packed several items into her calico bag until it bulged. If Papa would just let her work in the store a few more Saturdays, she'd earn all the money she needed. In just a few weeks, she would stand next to her sisters on Friday night and light candles herself. Everyone would see how grown up she was. Even Bubby would be proud of her then.